could get it together and give me a proper cue. Whoa, is RR Slugger jumping on a YouTube trend a few years too late for it to be relevant? <laughs> He sure is. Yeah, we're making a tier ranking video today. And this is something I've always wanted to do. I love tier ranking videos on YouTube. And uh, <laughs> I sound so disingenuous right now, but I, I really do. I really enjoy these videos. They're just not something I've ever come to make before. Um, although way back when, long before the slugometer, back in the original script, before I even started the channel for the Rock Raiders retrospective series, I wanted to tier rank the sets in that series. Um, so I originally started out with that kind of mindset. In the end though, I, you know, I kind of threw out the idea because, you know, every Rock Raider set is S tier. So, you know, <laughs> defeats the purpose. Uh, so, you know, this is just kind of sat on the back burner for a long time, but but as I pondered ideas on what I could tier rank, I started thinking, well, okay, Lego space. I have a lot of Lego space sets. Do I want to tier rank the series against each other? And in the end, the answer really was no, um, because I don't have every single set from every single theme. So uh, it doesn't seem fair to rank them that way. But then I kind of thought a little bit further and I, I figured, you know what? I probably have a, at least a few minifigures from each of these series. So why don't I rank the minifigures against each other? And that's what we're doing today. In order to tier rank all of the minifigures today, I've actually created a list of criteria that I'm going to be using to help gauge uh, where they fall on the uh, spectrum. So point number one, do I like the minifigure? And that is all of the criteria that I have prepared. <laughs> yes, this is going to be a very objective, quantifiable, numeric evaluation. <laughs> So I do have um, some notes in front of me here that I'm going to be using. We've got all of the minifigures lined up here on the bottom as we go. They're in release order. Hopefully this doesn't feel a little too cheesy for, you know, Slugger to be doing this. I actually went through and spent the time photographing all of these minifigures myself. So these are my own images down here, uh, except for the parts where I don't have the minifigures. But we'll get to those as we go along. It turns out I don't actually have all the minifigures needed for this. But uh, yeah, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. These are organized in release order, so we're going to start right at the, very, uh, at the very beginning here with the classic Smiley minifigure from Classic Space 1979 or 78 um, in some regions. So where are we putting this guy? Well, he's going all the way up into A tier. This will help um, kind of benchmark everything from here uh, going forward. Now I'm putting uh, this minifigure up in A tier because it's it's just such a minimalist classic design and it really covers all the bases. It's not my favorite ever, but I you know respect where you know respect is due. That this is such a timeless design. Uh, they really nailed it out out of the park, like knocked it out of the park right right from the get go here. So I think this is a really solid minifigure design and uh, we're gonna put it up in A for now. Now, as we go along, we might shift things around, um, but for right now, I feel this is a good comfy spot for us to start. This is a good, really solid minifigure design. Now, later on in Futuron, they took that same design and they kind of modified it. So you had this kind of, you know, uh, they changed over to the motorcycle helmets here and they also added a lot more detail to the torso. However, I, I kind of find that this loses a lot of that charming aspect and, you know, the, minim the minimalism that was captured here was kind of, you know, ruined here. It, it, there's something about this design just that just isn't like working for me. So I actually have Futuron a um, little bit lower. Initially on my notes here, I had it down in B. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm actually feeling C. We're gonna put it even lower down on the spectrum for now. We might bump it up later, but there is some stiff competition coming up here. So I feel like knocking this one down in C is okay for right now. It's just not my favorite design. However, speaking of one of my favorite designs, we have Blacktron 1. And this is going all the way to the top, baby. <laughs> Blacktron 1 is basically this perfect amount of detail to communicate the idea that they were going for. 
it, even when they went ahead and, and redesigned the minifigure for the gift with purchase, they added like superfluous bla uh, back printing, which doesn't really matter, you know, but no leg printing, no arm printing. There, there, there's no updated details on the torso. It is what it is. It is just perfection. They nailed Blacktron 1's minifigure design right from the get go. So I think this is one of the all time best minifigure designs for Lego space. And directly from first to last, the peak is never past, we're taking a look down here at Space Police 1. Now you can actually see, I'll, I'll set it next to the Futuron minifigure, you can see it basically reuses everything Futuron did, but just adds a red visor. Um, yeah, because there, there was actually black uh, Futuron torsos and, and minifigures with blue visors, I think. Um, anyways, I think this is a really, really lazy design. And it, it, it is so much less distinct than the Space Police 2 or 3 designs that we're going to see coming up later on. So I'm actually knocking this one all the way down to D. I, I think that's where I want to put it. Like, it, it's fine on its own. It's okay, you know, but but it doesn't really scream police to me, like, like, like Space Police. This is supposed to be um, a more distinct faction, I think. And um, I'm just not getting that from this design. It's too similar to Futuron. It's it's just, you know, reheated leftovers. Yeah, D tier. The next one on my list here is Mtron. And now this is a tough one because the Mtron design, I think shares a lot of similarities with that original classic smiley minifigure in that it's kind of a basic design, pretty dorky with just the, uh, just the logo on the chest there. Um, so, you know, it, it, it is it is what it is. It, it, it seems very minimalist as well, too. I don't think it quite hits the same heights as the classic minifigure, though. So I'm going to actually put it in B tier here. And now we actually have a pretty good lineup all the way through. Um, kind of serendipitous how that turned out there. But uh, yeah, we're going to put it in B. We might bump it up to A later on as we go, because I do think it is a pretty strong design. But like I said earlier, there is some really stiff competition coming up uh, later on in the 90s. So I think B tier right now is is good. You know, B tier is a good, respectable minifigure. I think when once you start getting C and below, that's when you start really seeing minifigures that could be better. You know, they're, they, they're somewhat lacking in, in some uh, aspects there. So yeah, B tier for now for Mtron. Next one here is Blacktron 2. And if you think I'm putting this up in S tier, you are absolutely incorrect. I'm, <laughs> I'm not putting this up in S tier. <laughs> Blacktron 1 minifigures are amazing. They, they capture that punk rock uh, look just so well. Blacktron 2 is, uh, I talked about this earlier in the Summer of Slug, um, a very, you know, <laughs> dorky poser design <laughs> to me. So they're not making it up here. I don't even think they're as good as Mtron in that respect. I like the Mtron minifigure uh, substantially more, to be honest. I'm gonna put Blacktron 2 down here. Um, we might actually bump it ahead of uh, Futuron if I can. Yep, well, let's flip them around that way. Yeah, I think I'd prefer the Blacktron 2 to the Futuron design. Uh, we'll organize them as we go, but um, yeah. Now, when it comes to the sets, don't get me wrong, Blacktron 2 has some of the greatest LEGO space uh, sets from the 90s. I, I think they're absolutely fantastic, um, but the minifigures are such a step down from, from Blacktron 1, <laughs> so yeah. In fact, I'd probably flip the, the sets around because I, I think Blacktron 1 had weaker sets than Blacktron 2 did, um, but the minifigures, we're ranking minifigures today, so you know, this is where we're gonna put them for now. All right, the next one we've got here is Space Police 2. And just for comparison, I'm gonna pop it down. Look at the huge amount of difference. Like what a glow up <laughs> from going from this, like, you know, your reheated leftovers, like I said earlier, <laughs> to this, like epaulets and air tanks in space. That is that's so cool, so fantastic. This is a really, really solid design. Um, and I, I don't want to spoil anything for what's coming on later on down the pipe here, uh, but this is my favorite of the Space Police minifigure designs. So it's going to rank higher than D tier, obviously, and it's going to rank higher than wherever I end up placing Space Police 3. But for Space Police 2, what I have here in my notes is actually B tier, and I think I'm just going to swap these two around. So we're going to put it up at the top of B tier. This one is a good candidate to bump up to A, though. Uh, I love the leather jacket design and, and all the 
weird details they got going on. The little badge there, the color scheme is really unique. Um, yeah, I, I really like a lot of what's going on with Space Police 2. So yeah, let's put it here for now. Before moving on to Ice Planet, I should probably also mention that you're now finally seeing a break away from the Happy Smile faces, right? Everything up to this point was just Happy Smile astronauts, and now with Space Police 2, you finally have the first unique printed uh, face for LEGO Space, and that's going to carry through all the way to the end now. So there's no more Happy Smile astronauts. That is kind of of their own era, and now we're moving into the more detailed designs uh, moving on. So so, like I said, Ice Planet. Coming up here, I really like Ice Planet's minifigures quite a lot. And it's not just because of their great torso designs and face details, so we're getting torso and face designs, but they have a unique visor piece that was made just for them. Um, none of the other LEGO Space themes that we're going to look at today have this same visor piece. Uh, and I think that's a really strong element of their overall design. Not only actually do they have visors, but you can't see it in the picture, but they have skis as well too. So these were really tricked out minifigures. Um, they had lots of great details to them and I love the color scheme. It, it just pops. Um, they look great. So A tier for sure. Um, I'll put them behind the classic space minifigure for now, um, just because I think this is, you know, really <laughs> an iconic design. Uh, they really, did did a really uh, good job with it really <laughs> next up we have spireus so spireus here i'm going to set them here in b just for now um one of the things that's cool about spireus minifigures is uh, like the spireus chief here had a printed helmet so he actually had printing on the motorcycle helmet right there and that was pretty neat i'm not a huge fan of the torso design um for the minifigures uh, or sorry, for the astronauts, I should say, but Major Kartofsky's design, the, the robot they had, um, I love everything about that, that minifigure. So I think if Spireus didn't have that uh, robot minifigure, I'd probably put them down in C, probably top of C, to be honest, I'd probably put them up here. Um, but because that minifigure, uh, the robot minifigure's in there, uh, I'm gonna bump them up to B, and I think that's a good solid B tier choice right there with Spireus, yeah. So next up we have Unitron, which is kind of the counterpart to Spireus in a lot of ways. You can see the Unitron Chief has a printed helmet just like Spireus Chief had a printed helmet. And we have a uh, printed torso design, similar, Similar, similar use of colors as well too. Um, but I, I gotta say, I really do prefer the Unitron design. There's something about the torso detail here that just works for me that doesn't work for me the same way with Spireus. So Unitron to me is actually a cut above. I have them up in A tier. That might be subject to change. As, as we go through, once we've put everything on the list here, we might go back and decide, well, you know what, maybe a Space Police uh, 2 minifigure is a little stronger than the Unitron minifigure. Uh, but yeah, for, for being as limited and small of a sub-theme as Unitron is, I really, really like the, the minifigure designs that they went with. Um, yeah, it's just a good, solid space adventure sort of look to it. And next up we have Aquazone. <laughs> now, you might have noticed this is a, uh, this is a Hydronaut minifigure here, and, um, you know, I'm using the Hydronaut minifigure to represent all of Aquazone um, from 1995 to 1998. And uh, you might also be wondering, why is Aquazone on a list of LEGO Space sub-themes? Um, and, and I get that, so you could maybe treat this with a little asterisk next to it. Um, however, I also see the argument uh, for considering Aquazone as LEGO Space. I think there's a, there's definitely an argument to be had there. And especially when you talk about minifigure designs, this really does embody a lot of what we're seeing around that era of LEGO Space. So I wanted to include it um, as well in, in our ranking here. Now, I, I didn't divide them out uh, for this list because when I divided them out for my notes that I took earlier, basically what ended up happening is that the Aquanauts and the Aqua Sharks were down here in C tier, and then everything else was in B tier. So I'm just gonna lump all of Aquazone in B tier. We're just gonna put it here for now. I think there are some pretty cool designs in Aquazone with the minifigures. They're not my favorite. They don't compete with some of the best of LEGO Space, but they are respectable. I think these are really, really good designs. So I think B tier is a nice happy place to put Aquazone. 
Next up, we have Explorians. And Explorians is a really interesting theme for me. Um, we're not talking about set design here today. We're talking about minifigures. And when I look at the minifigures just on their own, I think they're all right. I, I think they're pretty okay. I think, I think Explorians is the quintessential B tier <laughs> minifigure design. Nothing it does is truly remarkable, and yet nothing it does is wrong either. And so we're gonna keep it around here in B tier. I think I might, uh, I might put it here. I think I enjoy the Explorians minifigures a little bit more than I enjoy the uh, Aquanauts, or sorry, the Aquazone minifigures. Yeah, they're pretty interchangeable there. But um, yeah, this is about the bell curve that I want to see from a, from a list like this, by the way. Um, so if you're feeling like, wow, Slugger, you're putting a lot of things in B tier, um, that's because that's how it should go, <laughs> you know? If, if, I, if I weighted everything up here and we had a huge S tier sort of thing, because I'm like, oh, this is my favorite, this is my favorite, right? Then I'm not doing my job here by trying to make some, some difficult decisions. <laughs> so this is looking good so far. This is, this is exactly the sort of um, you know, layout we want to see at this stage of the game. With that being said though, here comes our UFO minifigures, and I'm not gonna mince words here. We're putting them right up into S tier. They might even take the, oops, let's swap around this way. I think it might even go in this direction. UFO has some of the best minifigures in any LEGO theme, not just LEGO space, any LEGO theme. Uh, some of the designs underneath their helmets uh, like the face designs are so alien, so abstract, and, and not even really cartoony in a way. Um, it, it really, it, it feels lived in, like in the world, that they, they belong. Um, I, I love all the detailing you're seeing. You're seeing now um, leg printing for the first time in LEGO space. Uh, oh, sorry, besides the, um, besides the uh, Spireus. Uh, and the uh, Explorians androids. Actually, I didn't even mention the the Explorians android. Now that I'm thinking about it, yeah, yeah. I, th I think you know these two should belong together. Yeah, yeah, down there. But uh, yeah, we're we're getting unique molds for the helmets, unique molds for the armor as well too. Uh, in UFO, they also have uh, cyborgs designs, uh, cyborg designs in there too. So much to love about the minifigures and so much variety as well too. I really do think that UFO is basically the, the high watermark for LEGO space uh, when it comes to minifigures. Yeah, yeah, great, great designs. Next up, we have a little bit of an odd one here. This is RoboForce. This one is RoboForce, and this is something that wasn't actually released in all regions. I think, uh, according to some sources, um, this is a North American exclusive theme. So if, if you're watching and you're not from North America and you've never seen RoboForce before, that might be why, is it might not have been released in your region. Um, actually, I think Unitron was very similar in that aspect. So RoboForce carries over some cool things as well too. You're noticing the leg printing uh, that we had with UFO. So that's pretty neat. Um, we are getting some reused designs here. Ironically, it's actually the Unitron chief face that's being reused over here. So that's kind of fun. <laughs> uh, the, the helmet mold from Explorians is being reused as well. Although this, this time the helmet is actually the clear piece, which I think is a cool look. I'm not crazy about the RoboForce minifigures. There was only two of them, two different designs. Uh, I'm not crazy about either one, to be honest. So I, I have them down here in C tier. Um, and I, I think I actually might even put them behind the other two that we have so far. Um, it's an interesting design. It's very 90s, very late 90s looking, but uh, it's not my favorite if I'm honest. So I think this is a fair spot for them. So after RoboForce came Insectoids. Now, Insectoids is kind of like a sequel series to UFO, and a lot of the minifigures kind of follow that same design language, where there were some cyborg, or uh, I think they're called gigabots, if I recall correctly, and then there was a ton of different unique characters um, with various different designs, with torso and face printing and leg printing all being different between them. So you're getting a lot of variety in that sense there. However, I don't like the designs of Insectoids as much as UFO. I think UFO really nailed it. And while I kind of get the whole like 
you know, fishbowl, bug-eyed sort of looking thing here. The faces underneath the helmets aren't nearly as interesting to me. They're, they all kind of veer more towards the, the you know, kind of standard looking face compared to what we saw with UFO. It doesn't feel as alien. So I actually have them down here in B tier and I just got to figure out where I want to place them because like there is a ton of variety uh, within insectoids almost to uh, like a strange degree though because it's not as colorful in its variety a lot of the variety is like just blue or gray you know it just slightly different printing on them um, so you know I, I don't know where I want to put uh, insectoids for now um yeah i don't like it as much as as mtron or space police 2. um hmm yeah it's a tough one because there's d definitely qualities of spireus and explorians that i prefer but um hmm let's put it here for now i have a feeling it's gonna hop leapfrog down to here at some point in time but uh well we'll keep insectoids here for for the time being now again just like i was talking about with blacktron 1 and blacktron 2 if if this was a ranking of the sets insectoids would be much higher than ufo i think insectoids has better sets than ufo does uh, but ufo's minifigures man i'm just telling you <laughs> there's really really nothing like them so yeah we're gonna keep we're gonna keep uh, ufo up here and insectoids nice middle middle zone here right middle of the b tier that seems fair for right now all right, Rock Raiders. Yes, it's my list. I get to include Rock Raiders if I want to include them. And I'm gonna bring them all the way up here to A to begin with. Uh, the, the really cool thing about Rock Raiders is that they had very detailed minifigures, both in faces and uh, torso designs. Now, the other thing that I think Rock Raiders does really well that none of the other themes so far have the same, you know, aspect to them is that Rock Raiders featured unique characters that all had very different outfits, very different designs uh, to what they're do, like what they're wearing. The face designs was very different as well too, but yet they all feel like they belong together. It's a real magic trick that I think deserves recognition. There's something about Rock Raiders that really nailed that aspect of everyone on the team feeling like they belong on a team together and uh, not needing to have a uniform to go with it. There, there is no Rock Raiders uniform, right? They all look distinct, they all look different. Not not all of them use the helmet design, and I think less than half of them do, right? So it's, uh, it's really interesting to see how Rock Raiders was able to pull that off. So right now I've got Rock Raiders up in A tier on my notes. I might even bump them ahead a few of these guys as well too. Um, I definitely think Rock Raiders um, excels more than Unitron. Um, <laughs> wow, this is a lot of a lot of my own bias here. Yeah, hmm, yeah, let's just, yeah, there we go. <laughs> this'll, this'll make uh, people <laughs> angry. <laughs> All right, we're gonna put Rock Raiders at the top of A tier for now. <laughs> and that's just the minifigure design. Like I said, I'm not talking about the sets. If we're talking about sets, you know, Rock Raiders is up here. <laughs> Rock Raiders sets are awesome, <laughs> but um, I think for minifigures, I, I think a good solid A tier is where Rock Raiders deserves to be. All right, and that's the end of 90s space. So everything from here on out takes place in the 21st century. So if we look at what we have so far, this is where I would rank 90s space. So the, the, the lineup here is pretty good. I think in order to balance this a little bit better, I'd probably need to grab one of these and bop them down to C tier to kind of help you know, fill out the, the lower ranks there. Ideally, we should be seeing the bulge around B tier, which is what we're seeing so far. So, you know, it, it's going well at, at this point in time. Um, I don't want to put a lot of things down in D tier. I want to save D tier for designs that I really think fail, that, like they fail at something fundamentally. Um, so Space Police 1, like we talked about earlier, it's just Futuron, just slightly, you know, a different visor piece actually is the only difference there, right? So um, yeah, the, you know, that that fails fundamentally to make something distinct. Um, so yeah, I think, I think Space Police 1 deserves to be down there. So far, C tier feels pretty good to me. These are designs that I'm like, like, these are okay, they're fine, you know, not my favorites. B tier is good, it, it ranges from like stuff that I really enjoy to stuff that I'm less crazy about on the on the lower end here, but all still, you know, good, 
the whole way through. A is stuff that I really do enjoy, that I think, like, this is, this is great stuff. Yeah, Rock Raiders, Classic Space, Ice Planet, and Unitron. Something about that Unitron design, I really enjoy it. It feels unfair to do something like this, but I, I, I really do consider, you know, Unitron quite good. I, I'm not going to do it though because like I talked about the the um, visors and, and the ski pieces and stuff like that. Like there's stuff that goes with these Ice Planet minifigures uh, that makes them a little bit more unique, a little bit more memorable. And then we got S tier up here. Some of the best classic space, or sorry, best Lego space designs uh, the company ever made. So yeah, good. Onwards and upwards though, we're moving into life on Mars. Now for some of these series coming up, and you can actually see it here, you know what, almost, almost for all of the series, <laughs> yeah, from, from 2001 to 2013, I think, we have two entries for each because there was a very distinct difference between the astronaut design and the Martian design or the alien design for some of these other series. So I wanted to rank them separately. So starting with the Life on Mars astronaut design, I actually have them down here in C tier. I don't think they're bad though, so we're probably gonna bump them up a little bit higher. Uh, yeah, I don't know, that, that's about right for now. They're just not my favorite. The, the torso printing is all right. Um, some of the other minifigures reuse the Hydronauts helmet, which I think is a good reuse of that. Um, and I do like the chrome, uh, you know, visor as well too. Uh, but they, they feel kind of hodgepodge to me in, in a way that the other minifigures so far don't. Like they feel very unified in a lot of cases, uh, these other designs. But the Life on Mars ones, they do really feel like they're just borrowing elements from other places. Some of the minifigures don't even wear gloves. Like they just have their, you know, their, their flesh tone, like skin, uh, yellow skinned hands kind of poking through, which I think is just bizarre. It's a really weird choice. Um, so not crazy about that. Uh, yeah, I think C tier is where this this design belongs because you know let's be honest if you're getting into life on Mars you're not getting into it for the astronaut designs that's just not what everyone's going to life on Mars for they're going to life on Mars for the alien designs for the Martian designs and these are S tier absolutely the probably one of the best alien designs Lego has ever done um, yeah fantastic so. Uh, I don't know really what else to say. There's so much variety in the designs that they made. So much uh, like like skin tone variety, gender variety, printing variety, like the, the torsos come in so many different cool colors. You can mix and match. There's so much potential there. Um, I really do think the Life on Mars Martians are some of the best. And um, yeah, I don't even know if I wanna keep them back here. Like I'm really, considering, can I put them up at the front? Yeah, what if we do something like that? Hmm. Yeah, they're jockeying for that top spot there. I'm, I'm gonna leave it like this for now. We can always adjust things as we go. But uh, yeah, I'm not joking. The, the, uh, <laughs> the Life on Mars Martians are really great. Like they, they, they nailed it. So yeah, we're gonna keep them up there for now. All right. Now we're on to everybody's favorite theme, Mars Mission. <laughs> well, everyone's favorite theme except mine. <laughs> Anyways, the Mars Mission astronaut isn't that bad. I don't think it's really all that bad. Um, I, I really dislike the reuse of just random minifigure heads uh, in this series. It's, it feels so lazy. Um, there's there's such a lack of character <laughs> behind the the marsh or sorry the um, the astronauts in the series. However, that being said, I, I appreciate the uh, the chrome or not, it's not really chrome, but the gold visor. It's kind of like a clear. You can almost see through it. It's it's strange, but um, yeah, I, I appreciate it. Um, the the torso designs are all right. They're not bad. Um, one thing I don't really appreciate though, I guess, you know, it's a symptom of the time maybe, but uh, they just printed on air tanks on the back, which again, feels really lazy when, when you have air tank pieces that you could be using. Uh, they just printed ones on, so <laughs> yeah, that's not great. Um, I have it sitting here in B tier. It's absolutely not B tier, it's, it's C tier for sure. <laughs> it's just, um, and it's probably bottom of C tier if I'm being perfectly honest. Uh, like, like I said, it's not terrible. I'm not, I'm not putting it down here, 
right? It, it, it's just not as good as many of the other things that have come before. So yeah, I, I would say comparable to the Life on Mars astronaut in terms of what tier it should belong in, but not comparable to B tier or, or above, yeah. And now we get into the Mars mission, Aliens, the Martians, and yeah, no surprises here. <laughs> Bottom of D tier, it's it's almost an insult to put these next to the Space Police 1 minifigures. <laughs> that, these minifigures are terrible. These are awful. There's no posability at the, at the shoulders. Um, they're made of this like cheap uh, feeling plastic. It's so easy to break the leg joints right here. Uh, yeah, awful, awful. I, I I can't believe they thought this was shippable. <laughs> like, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> like, I know there's lots of fans of Mars Mission out there, um, but even even when it comes to minifigures, like you know, you compare life on Mars, like the placement of of this compared to this, it's it's polar extremes. Um, they, I don't know, here, let's pull this down just for a sec. Like, <laughs> like I'm not crazy to, to say that this is awful compared to this, right? Like, like everyone can see that. <laughs> um, yeah, this is like a sham of a, of a, of a minifigure. <laughs> so let's pop this back up here. Yeah, Mars Mission has bad minifigures. Um, I think they have bad sets too, but um, that's neither here nor there. Um, yeah, Mars Mission is just not up to the caliber of some of the other LEGO space offerings. So yeah, I tried to be a little bit fair with this. I might even bump this this guy up a little bit higher. Uh, no, no, the printed air tanks. Printed air tanks is so lazy. Yeah, no. Yeah, we're keeping it here for now, but uh, yeah, this is this is just, just garbage. Uh, if I had an F tier thing, I'd pop this down into F for sure. Yeah, awful. All right, with the Mars mission slander out of the way, let's get to Space Police 3 slander. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm actually kidding. Space Police 3 does a lot of things really well in the minifigure department. Um, even the sets themselves. I, I, I don't really have a lot of problems with Space Police 3. Um, I, I think this is a good, solid uh, uh, sub-theme. Um, much, much better than Mars mission. Uh, with that being said though, I, I really don't dig the whole like riot officer look that every single space police, <laughs> you know, minifigure has. Uh, it's very dystopian. I'm not, I'm not jiving with it. Whereas, you know, space police two looks, looks like a traffic cop. He's like a highway patrolman. He's just going to pull you over and say like, well, you know, you shouldn't be doing warp eight in a warp five zone. Right. <laughs> uh, th this one, uh, it's giving me bad vibes. So um, yeah, I've got them down in C tier in, on my list. Way better than than the um, Mars Mission Astronaut though. Um, do I like it more than RoboForce? I kind of like it more than Futuron though. So maybe I need to do something like, oops, ugh, something like this. Yeah. That feels about right. I'm not. I'm really not crazy about the Futuron designs. Um, it it kind of took everything that was working with classic space and just kind of uh, made it not work anymore. There's something about this design that just does, uh, doesn't gel with me. So I don't know. Maybe if they'd kept the original helmets. Maybe if they had that classic helmet. Because I I do like the torso print idea. I get I get the Star Trek vibe that they're going for with it. Um, Although that being said, this is a white torso that's been printed red rather than red with white printing underneath it. So it doesn't look good from all angles the way that this one does. Yeah. All right, like, like I said, you know, living document. It, it's, <laughs> and we'll change it as we go. But uh, yeah, now you can see that it, it looked like the list was top heavy before. Now it's feeling a little bit more bottom heavy, right? We're starting to <laughs> round out the bottom ranks. So <laughs> yeah, there's a good chance that we'll pop this down here at some point in time. We'll see, we'll see. But yeah, Space Police uh, 3, the, the minifigures, like the, um, the cops, I should say, uh, they're all right. They're okay, but um, not as good as Space Police 2, but better than Space Police 1. So yeah, middle of the road, that seems fair. However, the Space Police 3 Aliens. Now again, just like with Life on Mars, that's why you're getting into the theme. That's why you're getting into Space Police 3 is because you're going for the aliens. The alien designs are awesome. 
they really do deserve the S tier rank up here. Uh, very, like they're varied and uh, they're all just loaded with character. There's so much character be be uh, behind the molded heads that they went with. Uh, I, I love it. I, I really, really love it. So yeah, it belongs up here. So similar situation actually, you've got your um, life on Mars astronaut and the life on Mars aliens and you've got the <laughs> the space police astronaut or cop or whatever and then you've got the uh, the space police aliens up here I don't know if I want to bump this design better than the other ones um, yeah we'll, we'll keep it here for now because I, I think in the space police 3 aliens there there are certainly designs I prefer over other ones that I don't like as much so because you have such a wide range there, I don't think they're all necessarily S tier designs, but they all um, collectively earn this rank up here. So we're gonna pop them up into S tier, um, but we'll keep it at the, at the end of S tier. I still think, you know, Blacktron, you know, it's a one trick pony, but that one trick is, is amazing. And uh, UFO, I think the variety all works a little bit better than it does for Space Police 3. So we'll keep it there. Um, these two are kind of jockeying for position here. There's just something about this design. I don't know, it really is wonderful. <laughs> and now we're kind of coming into the end of um, the the figures that I have. I, I, there's still a few that you can see popping up here that I, I do have figures for. I was really surprised as I was going through my collection. I don't have a single Alien Conquest set or minifigure. Like what the heck, <laughs> what happened? So. I don't have these figures in person. I included them on the list just because I figured that folks would get upset if I didn't include them on the list, but really take both of these entries with a grain of salt. I don't have these minifigures. My opinion really shouldn't matter in this case here. Um, so right now I've got uh, the uh, Alien Conquest astronauts down in C tier on my list here. I'd probably rank them lower than the Mars mission ones, to be honest. Um, I, I don't like the color, the baby blue color. Um, I just don't like the color in general, and I think it looks bad on minifigures making spacesuits out of it. So yeah, <laughs> uh, that doesn't bode well for, for Galaxy Squad coming up here. But uh, yeah, I don't think this design is, is really working. And uh, I, I really don't like the new helmet mold that they made for this series. Uh, again, that's not boding well for Galaxy Squad. <laughs> But yeah, I think it's a really ugly helmet and uh, yeah, torso design. Like like the, the detail is nice. Um, if this was printed on a different color, I think I'd really like this, this uh, astronaut design uh, or trooper or whatever they're supposed to be. Uh, like if you, if you printed this on dark blue, like like what the printing kind of shows or maybe a dark gray or, or heck even on white, I think this would look a lot better. So it really is the plastic that they chose to print this on and uh, yeah keeping it low on the list as a result. Next, we have the Alien Conquest Aliens. Unfortunately, the photo got a little cut off here, <laughs> so we just have a big frowny face. Um, like I said, I don't have any of these, so I'm gonna keep them down low on the B tier list. I, I don't like the designs as much as I like the Space Police 3 astronauts, which I think are the closest analog to each other, uh, given the visual design of the molded faces. Um, however, the torso detailing is really nice. And um, I, I do like this design quite a bit. It's, it's definitely not down here, <laughs> right? So this is good, but we're gonna keep them on, at the back of B tier for now. I think that's a fair place to put them. Uh, I just, you know, I enjoy the designs that are in front of it more. So yeah, let's keep it there. So now we get into Galaxy Squad, and I actually do own a fair number of minifigures from this series, and a couple of sets now too. So um, hopefully we'll see some you know, slugger coverage of Galaxy Squad in the future. But I've gotta say by and large, the trooper designs, these minifigure designs aren't working for me. Um, again, it's the color choices they went with. I do appreciate the gray torso this time around. And um, some of the other minifigures have different colored arms, but they're all kind of like bright baby looking colors. I, I, I'm just not liking it. On top of that, they, they did something weird with some robot heads, but the robot heads are like out of scale, out of proportion with the rest of the body. I just think it looks wrong. Like like the, the heads are too small compared to the rest of um, the rest of the minifigures. So uh, yeah, not great. 
However, I will say I, I appreciate them a bit more than what I'm seeing with the Alien Conquest minifigures. Uh, like I said, I do like the gray torsos and I like the variety here a little bit more. Um, I don't know if it if it goes higher than Mars mission though. Yeah, it's it's just not great. It, it Again, it's, it's not really working for me. So we're gonna keep them down low here low on the C tier, I think is fair for what, what I see. So next we have the Galaxy Squad Aliens. And for a long time, I actually didn't separate these two because I felt that my gripes with these minifigures kind of carried over to these minifigures. I'm not crazy about them. However, I will say that the kind of mosquito design they went with uh, and the kind of bugoid look um, does work better. Like, even though it's not my personal favorite, I think it does work better than what they had going on with the troopers. So I, I do want to bump it up uh, to B tier. That being said, though, I actually prefer the Alien Conquest aliens. Um, so yeah, I, I like I like the, the bit more of the cartoonish look there. I think it's more fitting with what we see with Space Police Three and the minifigures of that era. Uh, the Bugoids, like they've got a look going for them. They do look a little, little bit more scary, a little bit more legitimate um, threats, like uh, UFO did. So, you know, it's just a different kind of flavor there. But personally, I do prefer the Alien Conquest designs. So they're pretty neck and neck. They're not my favorite aliens. These are my favorite aliens up here, <laughs> you know, up, up in the S tier category, but they're fine. They're in B tier, low, low end of B tier. I think that's that's where I'd put them. And that actually takes us to the end of Lego Space, like what I would consider Lego Space. Down here, we have Lego In Space, which is, you know, your spaceport, that sort of stuff. Um, honestly, that's where the Life on Mars astronauts belong to. These are all astronauts that came from Earth. Everything else, um, actually, you know what? Mars Mission's in that same category. Ah, man, and so is uh, Alien Conquest. Mm. Oh, the lines get blurry. The lines get blurry. Uh, yeah. So anyways, th this is what, um, like, if, if you look on Bricklink, I, I think these are all considered Lego space. And then these ones down here are like spaceport or Lego city space stuff. So I guess that's where the where Bricklink draws the line. Not necessarily where I would agree with that line being drawn, but that's kind of where we're at. So if we wanted to balance this out a little bit, I think what we would need to do is bump some things up from B into A and maybe something from C down into D. I'm hesitant to do that because I, you know, like I said earlier, I kind of see D tier as like reserved for failures in design. Something really went wrong here, right? So I don't want to put something, you know, like, like I don't want to grab like a guy like, like, you know, th that's just so unfair. <laughs> like I said earlier too, it's, it's honestly unfair to put Space Police 1 next to this. So, <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll drop it. <laughs> I'll stop harping on this, this design. It's so bad. It's so bad. Anyways, let's get into these um, astronauts, like spaceport looking things, right? So we're actually starting with 1995. This is Launch Command. Launch Command. One thing that I really like about this is the, the chrome helmet being used, but on top of that, the minimalist spacesuit. Very stark details, but you know, everything about this just works. Like it, it really does work. Um, they, they did a great job with the astronaut design. And it, as far as I know, this is one of the first, you know, like astronauts from Earth designs uh, Lego did, like NASA inspired sort of EV suits. Um, Originally, I had this down in B tier on my notes, but the more I looked at it, the more I really thought about it, I really do think this is an A tier design. It's tough to rank these sorts of designs, like these, uh, these spaceport ones that we're gonna see coming up here. It's tough to rank them against some of the more nonsensical things. Like how, how do you rank you know, this versus this, right? It's apples to oranges. So I'm not sure where I wanna put them in A tier, but I, I really do think they de they deserve to be up um, high, higher echelon stuff up here. So launch command, really solid. After launch command came spaceport. So this is, uh, I think 1998, if I remember correctly, I always get this one wrong. 98, maybe 99, I always get spaceport wrong. Um, I don't like this design as much as I like this design. I'll be honest. 
Um, even though I grew up with a lot of spaceport sets, um, I didn't have Launch Command growing up, but I think Launch Command is just a little bit better visually, like if you compare these two designs. However, one thing that uh, Spaceport does have going for it is that it has uh, a lot of variety with ground crew. There's there's lots of different individuals um, and minifigures that are included outside of just the astronaut. So that's pretty cool. I don't know if it's cool enough, honestly, to keep it up in A tier, though. Um, I, I kind of think this is a B tier design, and if I were to knock it down... Oh gosh, this is so tough to find a spot for it because it's like, well, how do you compare insectoids to spaceport? You know, <laughs> it's kind of wild. Um, hmm. Yeah, it's tricky. I don't want to put it too low because I do like a lot of the stuff going on. But uh, yeah, I'm not too crazy about this compared to this. This is just cleaner. Yeah, really good, good design language. This is just kind of busy for the sake of being busy. I don't know. Yeah, let's go with this for now. And then we get these minifigures. I, I thought I had them. This is um, Lego City Space 2011, and this is 2015. Um, th these designs are just, I don't know, they're so forgettable. I thought I had them. I, I don't have them, so I just... To, uh, just grab images of them. Again, because I don't have the minifigures, you can absolutely take what I'm about to say with a grain of salt. Um, but these two, like, like you could interchange them. They have no identity to them. They're just so forgettable. Um, so I, I think, whoops. Ah! I think I had it right before. I think this is the 2011 one. This is the 2015 one. I honestly don't know. Like just by looking at them, you could shuffle them up and you know put them behind your back. And I wouldn't know which one was which after you took them out again. Um, yeah, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> you can disagree with me if you like, but um, yeah, again, there's no identity to these builds or sorry to these uh, minifigures. The designs just such a lack of identity. Um, I really think they kind of fundamentally fail to stand out compared to some of these other designs that we've already seen. So yeah, they're getting bottom spots down here. Not as bad as the uh, Mars mission Martian, of course, obviously, uh, but they do add a nice little buffer between Space Police 1 and this. So yeah, let's put them there. All right, in 2019, there was a really, really good space theme from Lego City. It, it seems like they had got the awful ones out of their system and they just decided, you know what, we're gonna go full force into Lego uh, City Space and we're gonna do Spaceport again. It's basically Spaceport revised, you know, 20 years later with uh, all the minifigure details that they had and uh, different types of minifigures. Right now I have one of the astronauts um, here that it, it wouldn't be in an EV suit, but this is one of the uh, folks that would live inside the space station. There was a huge variety of minifigures in this series, huge, massive variety. And because of this and because of the designs they went with, and I love all the designs of all the minifigures, I'm, I'm doing this, I'm putting this up in S tier. That, that might come as a shock uh, <laughs> compared to some of the other stuff that I have below it. But for what it is, this is the best uh, Lego has ever done with the NASA designs was 2019. So um, yeah, the minifigures from this series, fantastic, no notes. Like I think they just nailed it. They, they really, really knocked it out of the park. So it's, again, it's tough for me to rank it against some of the other designs. Like, like I honestly might do something like this because I really do think that they, they ah, no, not better than Blacktron. Whoops, ah, better than Space Police 3 though, maybe. Yeah, more consistently good. Yeah, that, that might be, that might be heresy. <laughs> we might, <laughs> you speak sedition, you know? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Let, let's do this for now. Yeah, but yeah, th this is my favorite uh, civilian designs of, um, you know, Lego space. I, I, I think they, they really nailed something in that 2019 era of uh, astronauts. So yeah, bit bit shocking, hey? You know, we've got a we've got an S tier populated with some 90s, with some 80s, with some early aughts and some late aughts, and then you know 2019. Like that's pretty cool. That's a good array of uh, different designs all up there in S tier. So yeah, I like that. 
So next we have 2022. Now I'm going to pop it up here for the moment. This is not where it's going to stay. I just want to showcase how basically in 2022 they said, well, let's just do everything we did in 2019 again <laughs> and change a few details. So we're going to put the classic logo on and, you know, change the color of the torso. Um, yeah, I, I, the, the 2022 uh, space series is really limited compared to what they did in 2019. So already they, they're not, you know, competing on uh, even keel. But the, uh, the, the choices they made to change, like everything they changed about 2022 compared to 2019, I think was a change for the worse. So for example, these two are astronauts that would have lived in the space stations, their, their respective space stations, but the dark blue, or sorry, the regular blue torso just looks way better to me than the baby blue. I, again, I just don't like this color. <laughs> so um, yeah, I think all the changes are made for the worse and it just kind of retreads old ground so in my notes I have them in B tier but honestly that kind of feels a little generous compared to some of the stuff that I see in C tier um, yeah like I don't know I, th I think this kind of does belong somewhere down here they're not bad designs though like like I don't want to chuck it down here it's, it's definitely not as bad as what you got in 2011 or 2015 those are just boring forgettable designs um, but uh, yeah I think some, somewhere around there is probably where I want to put them. Again, not bad, but everything we saw here was already done better. So, yeah. Yeah, we'll put, put them down there. Knock Mars mission down another peg. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> and here we have the final entry for our list here. This is LEGO City Space 2024. <laughs> A name that shall be remembered by all who knew it. Uh, I'm going to put it up here in A tier. It's not staying here. Absolutely not. Um, anyways, these minifigures are kind of based on the designs that we saw in the 2022 series, weirdly enough. There's there's some interesting uh, correlations between them. Um, they have an interesting helmet design that I'm not crazy about. Actually, both the helmets. They've got new backpack designs I'm not crazy about. But the really big thing that I, I, I really dislike about these minifigures is the colors. Uh, the colors are such a weird mismatch, and honestly, none of it works for me. Um, the only minifigure that I think is is like really, really good from this series is the the weird like admiral uh, character who actually brings back the epaulets from the Space Police Two minifigure, uh, which is fun. I, I I love that. So that's a really cool minifigure. All the rest, though, uh, these these are ones that I just kind of chuck in a bin. That I'm, you know, I'm not I'm not a huge fan of any of them, to be honest. I do like some of the visual designs they did with the faces. Um, you know, the the uh, um, constellation across uh, across this character's face is pretty cool. Uh, that being said, again, it, it's colors. So yeah, this is down in C tier, and honestly, yeah, it's it's low for me. It's really low. I think these these uh, minifigures are a visual nightmare. There's just so many clashing colors. Um, yeah, I don't like them at all. Uh, oh gosh, am I doing this? I might do this even. Woo! Yeah, that's spicy. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, I, I just feel like uh, either a colorblind person designed them or they were just uh, <laughs> out of touch with uh, with good visual design language when they were making some of the color blocking choices on these minifigures. So yeah, I know some people like them. Like like I, I get a lot of uh, comments from folks that, that say that they really enjoy these minifigures. Um, so I know I'm gonna upset some people by putting them this low but uh, I don't have really any love for the minifigure designs that they went with. Um, I, I like the sets. I think the sets are really strong. They, they definitely suffer from their own problems of lacking character and whatnot. I've talked about that before, um, but the minifigures are, ugh, yeah, not, not good designs in my, in my estimation. So that should be every single minifigure uh, design or from every series, I should say, from Lego Space. This should be it. I, I don't think I missed anything. Uh, let me know if I did. Now, with that being said, let's take a look and see if we can change this bulge a little bit here. 
because right now we have a little bit too much uh, on the C tier end of things and not enough in the A tier side of things. So we need to just reorganize a few things to get a nice um, gradual curve to this if, if we can. So I think, you know, the first couple of choices are obvious. We're gonna bring Space Police 2 up. Oh, I wanna bring Mtron up as well too. Hmm, uh, that'll be close. Yes, actually, you know what, I think we can, because if we do that and then bring some of these from C up to B, that means I also gotta bring the, ah, no, I don't know. There's something, there's something keeping me from doing that. Um, yeah, I really think these minifigures belong down here. Oh gosh. Hmm, this is tough. <laughs> yeah, because I'm, I'm not crazy about that design. I don't think that, that uh, Blacktron 2 belongs in B tier. Uh, same with Life on Mars, same with Space Police, Roboforce, Futuron. Yeah, maybe what I need to do is increase the bulge down here. Maybe I got to bring one of these down, maybe two of them down. I really do think these two kind of belong together. Although, you know what? The the letter grade difference there might make some sense, to be honest, to have um, Alien Conquest down here and um, Galaxy Squad up here. Like I talked about, there is more variety here. I like more of the printing choices that went on with this. Um, this is suffering from the same sort of problems that this one is actually. <laughs> I don't know if I can do that though. Uh, this is such a lazy design. It's just like a, a visor change and that's it. Um, yeah, yeah, let, let's go with that. I, that feels more fair. <laughs> um, this is a bit better. I wouldn't mind B being a little bit stronger and C having less, but uh, I don't know, what can I say? They, there's just a lot of like C tier designs <laughs> in Lego Space minifigures. <laughs> Um, hmm. Who deserves the top spot? Th these are all pretty neck and neck, I'll be honest. Um, yeah, the Life on Mars Martians. Yeah, it, it's pretty close. But, and honestly, with Blacktron 2, or uh, Blacktron 1 uh, as well, these are all really solid. And then what they did with LEGO Space in uh, 2019, again, really good decisions all across the board. So what about our A tier list here? Um, yeah, this is perfect. This is great. I, I, I like Rock Raiders minifigures. I, they have tons of identity. I know it's kind of tough to compare them to the classic space minifigures like that. Um, but yeah, we're gonna keep them up at the top of A tier. I'm not, you know, putting them up here. <laughs> like I, I, I have no grand illusions about Rock Raiders. I think Rock Raiders does something really unique, and and it does it really well, though. And in that in that niche that it tries to occupy, the ragtag team of individuals that all visually look like they belong together. Um, I, I think it just excels at that. It, it's one of the best um, best iterations of that uh, in this list, or, or honestly in Lego in general. I think they just nailed it. Um, which is one of the strengths of Rock Raiders versus Power Miners, but you know, Power Miners isn't on this list, so we're not we're not talking about it. <laughs> Otherwise, this A tier is looking really good to me. I like I like the order of events here, and I like actually that we were able to bump um, Space Police Two and Mtron up into A tier. I think they do belong up here ultimately. Um, down here, Insectoids at the top of B tier is good. I, I've I, you know. I love a lot of what Insectoids does. I just don't love it as much as what I have up here in A. Uh, you might disagree, that's totally fair, but it is kind of interesting to have it above um, Spireus and Explorians. Um, I, th I think that's the right call. It's tough because uh, like Major Kartofsky from Spireus is one of my favorite minifigures of Lego space, probably in the top 10 of minifigures, but that's just one minifigure from a theme that had two other minifigures that uh, I'm not super crazy about. Um, the Spyrus Chief is pretty good though. So I think evening it out in B tier right here makes a lot of sense. Explorings is all right here. Yeah, yeah, this is all feeling pretty B tier as, as we go down the list here. Um, the only one I'm tempted to do is actually that. That's the only swap that I, I feel um, I'm, I'm somewhat tempted to do. 
I might actually go with that and put Spireus at the top of B tier. Um, Insectoid's right behind. And then, yeah, the quality kind of starts to dip or my interest kind of wanes, I suppose, as we go down the list. And then we get to C tier. This is a very C tier design. <laughs> There's something about Mtron that just works for me that doesn't work for me with Blacktron 2. Um, yeah, I don't know what it is. It might be the logo. The logo of Mtron is just way cooler than Blacktron's. I don't know. Uh, and then as we go down the list here, yeah, Life on Mars, Space Police. Ah, man, that, that is tough. Yeah. That's an option. Oh, the chrome visors. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, dystopian police brutality society. Hmm. I don't know. All right, let's keep it like that for now. Roboforce. Kind of weird. All right. Futuron. It's all right. Yeah. And then D tier. Yeah. I think we've done it. I think this is RR Slugger's tier ranking of all the Lego Space minifigures. Woo! That was a lot of fun. <laughs> I kind of want to keep going. Like, I kind of wish there was more I could toss up here on the, on the list afterwards. But uh, no, we've come to a close. That's where we're going to leave it here. Um, let me know what sort of changes you would make. Uh, did I get something like horribly wrong? Are there any folks out there that would put this honestly above anything else? <laughs> I wouldn't. Um, what else did I get wrong here? I, I could see some folks like taking the bugoids and like putting them up pretty high. I could see some people really thinking that uh, that those are uh, synonymous designs. Also, I could I could definitely see the argument if someone wants to say that um, the classic space astronaut is the best lego space design they ever made and everything else has been in its shadow i totally get that i i you know i can see where you're coming from it's not my personal favorite so that's why i have it down here however i i will admit they got so many things right right out of the gate so that's why it belongs here in this in this top uh, pretty close to the top <laughs> in a tier but uh yeah Anyways, I think I'm rambling at this point. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I had a ton of fun with this. Let me know if there's something else you'd like me to tier rank in the future. Uh, this was an obvious first pick for me, but maybe there's something else um, that you'd like to see me do. Or maybe you, you don't like this at all. <laughs> and my list was so bad that you never want to, to see me go near one of these in the future ever again. So <laughs> that's cool too. If, if that's the case, I, I, you know, I, I understand. I get it. So <laughs> this has been a little bit different, but hopefully it's been kind of a fun end to the summer of Slug. Uh, it, it kind of worked out interestingly that these last few videos have been very opinionated. Uh, that wasn't planned, but you know, sometimes the you know the stars align and that's how things work out but uh, yeah let me know what it got wrong let me know what it got right as well too if you if you see some stuff that uh that you say like yeah you know what i agree slugger <laughs> let me know as well too but uh yeah like i said thanks for watching i'll see you all in the next video